Welcome back. This is going to be an exciting game. It's going to be Nuriki versus Vanir. But now I want to talk with the Danish hearts. I want to talk with... Is that me? I, I've, I found my love for Denmark. Oh, why? <laughs> well, you know, I used to... You're looking to know better, guy. Goldberg, by the way. You're looking better, man. I'm just saying. I used to know this guy. He used to be blonde. I kind of kicked him off for his bad power rankings, though. Yeah. And also his bad influence. Yep. Yeah. He's Welcome back, Throwball. Welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got that right. Okay, uh, Nuriki versus Vanir. To me, this oh, is like mode. the game of the day. Is it? It's not. I would say it's the game of the day. For yeah. me, it is, because yeah. I look at all of the games that we have, and this one is the one which this could be clear narrative defining. Yeah. Um, this might not be the best game, because particularly if Vanir have a very strong early game and Nuriki have a weaker early game, could actually be a bit of shutout. But if it does go in Nuriki's way, it goes a long way in proving their slow and steady rise upwards. And if that's going to plateau here, if Vanir beat them. So here's where I will raise you my Uno reverse card. <laughs> because I feel like Nuriki's laning phase, particularly in the bot lane, mm. is unmatched. Like, they're really good at taking advantages. They will draft for strong bot lane. They will play the push. They will get the minions. They will get dominance in the bot lane, especially since we have Azitor. And we've been talking about Azitor for a long time. And the question has always been, Sure, you mm. win your lane. Can you translate that to a mid-game scenario? Can you translate that to pressure? Can you bleed that on the rest of the map? And I think one of the few question marks that this has not been able to unfold has been top lane. Because Petoshka looks really promising from Ricky, but a lot of the times his wave management is not on point. He puts himself in very sticky situations. And if uh, a bruiser on the other side of the map gets really fed, you're jinxed, there's only so much you can do. <laughs> I agree with that idea because they are finally playing to the bot side. They realize and they respect where they should play in. But if you lose the other lines, you're an AD carry. See, you know jinx. the AD carry. I didn't say Azitor, I said Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> they're one. They're, like they're actually one to one at this jinx, point. They're like one at this point. <laughs> but what about Vanir? We've been talking about this team ever since the beginning of the split where they showed a lot of promise. Obviously, the, the early game and then the, yeah, they had that, the V. But uh, they're falling a little bit behind now. Little bit. Uh, and then I'm in a V for Vendetta at this point. So <laughs> their loss to Riddle was, for me, a bit of a shock. And they did low roll with the Ocean Soul in that game, and that really hurt them. On luck? I, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I really like their jungle support. I love Noodle. I love Quicksith. I think when they're on their game, very hard to stop them finding great engages. If Noodle has Jin Zhao, the only Jin Zhao I would say is better than Noodle in the league right now is Haru himself. And we saw how well he did on that earlier. <laughs> these, cha the, these players have comfort champions. They have power picks. And then you look at how they manage to play the game with a lead through those champions. They are so confident at getting their way into fights that I love watching Veneer play when they've turned everything on. And now that we have the option, because we still have a few minutes before the championship. Oh, we got, to, we got to blabber a lot now. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's his favorite. Let's go. I'm just going to say that I have no idea. I lost communication, so you guys have to be my communication. Okay. So far. okay <laughs> I'm just saying this, pointing it right now. But uh, looking into the champion select, because we have a few minutes, I'd like to know um, what sort of bands we should have. Why am I mesmerized by this? I have no <laughs> idea. Uh, what sort of van should we be looking into this game? Is oh, this he's, he's, he's more flexible than Veneer's drafting or something. Oh. I was, I was going to say, say that. <laughs> flexible this? than Sahira's champion pool. Ooh. Ooh. What are we doing? Ooh. Sorry, Sahira, much love. <laughs> we should See, be firing towards the Prime League, not all players. We should be protective of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So, More flexible than their run at EU Masters in 2020. Ooh, yeah! Oh, no, it's not going. <laughs> okay, we're done. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> now, is this one of those champion selects where we get to see like non-specific champions being banned and the meta champions going through or uh, are we finally going to see the so meta players at meta champions? Game so game there's game. some meta champions in there and one champion which because we have more time. It is meta anymore at this point. Literally you know, everything. I hate that word right? by the way. Oh, yeah. I hate it. Amongst everything, Zeri, who is enabled, oh, has been banned several again, times the today. Zeris. And we're right into... Oh, there we go. We've actually bought up all our time. Keyword. Key it was the keyword. <laughs> Sorry. I know that everyone knows that casters actually start the game. It's not production. We have full control over it. And there you go. I started the game early for you. Thank it's you like later. every time Sam says, we can't throw to a break yet because we need to talk a little bit more. Yeah. Like, I was just kidding. We're going to break. <laughs> Ooh. 
So Zeri's open, TF's first picked. Lots of power picks across the board. You still have a Felios Thresh, you still have Jinx. You know what? There you go. Pick it. I'd I want to like, see it. I'd actually like to see either Akali or Silas. Now, I know that Sahira is not an Akali yeah. player, but he could play Silas. Rise is also not. I'm all. pretty sure that Sahira plays Silas. My only key question here is that you want to follow around, so Akali and Silas can usually follow around. Now, Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not a huge fan of Zeri. I don't know not where. She's, I don't. I don't know where she's gonna end up. It might also be like a dual lane, right? It might be uh, in the hands of the bot lane for Zeri. I cannot. Right. What? Okay. They. Uh, oh. It's like. Cool. It's, what, it's one of those dances. Okay, so we have the Zeri locked in now. If you didn't see the LEC the other week, uh, shout saying? out. We did do a bit of a breakdown over there. But the shout thing out about to Zeri, you, you did a breakdown. Oh, oh, you. But the thing, is, <laughs> oh, you. the thing about Zeri is that you need to have CC to lock her down. There's a gold card. That gold card is going to be so, so immensely powerful um, off of the TF. Uh, if you're going to lock in a Fellow Thresh as well, you also have an incredibly strong laning 2v2, which is something that you called out earlier. As much as Zeri is fun, it's great. It's an electrifying pick in so many different ways. This is almost the worst draft already for it to be into. I'd like to see Vinay actually start drafting some CC. Something to lock down picks such as the Aphelios, something to reach the Aphelios, something to reach the Twisted Fate. Now, falling back towards the Gwen, we saw Carlson play the Gwen, fell massively behind in the laning phase, but you see, once she's been unleashed together with the Yumi as well, it's just really hard to take her down. Now, the question is, what does Nuriki have in their bag? What does Petoshka have in the bag to try to take down the Gwen? We see he Jax played before. Jax, exactly. Didn't well. It didn't work out that well. Although in his defense, he did screw up a little bit in the landing phase. Is that in his defense? Wait, in his defense? That's, that's, that's the opposite okay, of okay. his defense. In the matchup's defense. <laughs> that's better. <laughs> in the matchup's defense, it was a little bit of a problem in the landing phase. Yeah. Now. You could also see Petoshka play towards a weak side, right? Which mm. makes uh, very obvious that Nuriki will want to play towards the bottom of. I don't blame them. I would love to see a lot of attention towards Azito. You have the Twisted Fade, get a really hard ganking jungler. You can go towards something like the Hecarim, can throw Zeri completely off of laning phase. You can go towards something the Lee Sin, that's playmaking together with the Twisted Fade. And these two aggressive, hyper-aggressive junglers can pair up really well with the Twisted Fade, especially when you want to invade. I'd like to see something powerful for the mid lane for Vanir, at least for the beginning of the game. To shut down the Twisted Fight also makes him pressure. So the jungler has to decide whether he wants to go for the mid or shut down the Zeri. The Zeri needs a lot of time to wake up. I just up. really want Silas here. I really, Silas really, seems pretty good. really it want is. Silas. Um, Silas with Yumi is also fairly strong. I think the risk you're running into at that point is that a fellow Thrash and TF are really good at people diving into them. Yeah. And at that point, you've picked like four champions that all want to dive into you. Probably not that great in actual. The melee as well? Two of them melee and one of them's a cat, so less said about that, the better. <laughs> it kind of does. I mean, at least you got your QO. Okay, so the question is, are you going to go back to something like the Rise to be kind of on that same wavelength of, oh, we can still get out to side lanes, but it's not quite as hard as the Silas. Maybe gives you a bit more leeway for that kind of play style we're going towards later on. They're actually not going towards any of that with that Victor lock in. Uh, welcome to the stage, uh... me, and, me and my older years. Um... <laughs> okay. <laughs> this screams to me, we want to scale, we want to go late game. It doesn't scream to me, Vanir. It doesn't scream to me, we no. want to take you down in the laning phase, and we want to fumble a mid game, but then also to fight you in the later stage of the game and win. It doesn't scream Vanir to me the entire draft. I'm looking through the map and I'm like, where are you playing towards? There is no setup anywhere. You can't gank a Great Yumi talk. lane, like you that. can't gank a Gwen lane because you have no setup. You can't gank the Victor because he has no setup. What do you have in the jungle department, unless it's a Sejuani or a Zac out of nowhere, that can really hard gank lanes. Um, a little bit over the, on the fence here uh, on the Victor pick. The Victor, I feel like the Victor is just like the worst of the situation you've got left. It's like, well, we've already picked a lot of melee, better pick some range and some scaling in terms of like our DPS output later on. Feels like a bit of a consolation pick. Shogath locked in. I think this I'm game PTSD. So that, that went really badly for Nariki the last time they played it, but that was yes. when they had three losing lanes 
and they didn't necessarily know what they were going to do in the team fights. And this could be a last minute switch of the Gwen back to the jungle, have to Camille into the top side. Shogat is fairly have to be left on an island in this comp though, and it does allow you, like we wanted to see, to have a really strong bot side with the, the duo of the Aphelios, uh, Aphelios Thrash. Shogath is going to be going up to. Uh, is going to be going up against. I was just seeing the flips around like Zeri top. No, I was just okay. Freaked out, so but, yeah. this makes a lot of sense because Vanir is like screw bot side. We're going to scale mm, anyway. Yeah. We're going yeah. top side of the map. Now the problem here is that after six you've got a twisted fate that can reply to a gank. If you keep the warden on the top side of the map for Petoshka, he can be extremely um, safe. But Petoshka is not known for being extremely safe. So I think for Vanir, this is the good side of the map to try and attack. What I will say, this draft is the charge of the Light Brigade. Um, everything Vanir wants to do, everything Vanir wants to do besides the Victor is dive straight at you. Every champion on the rookie loves people diving into them. Mm -hmm. Cannons on the left, cannons on the right, cannons straight down the center. It's going to be a hard game for Veneer to win in fights. Yeah, I think so too, because they're like, the champions are very straightforward, right? They're coming at you, melee range, they don't necessarily have any dive, which makes it much more difficult. They're going to have to rely on finding the flanks and finding the picks. And I think Nuriki have sold that their mid game is getting much better and much better at Just setting. Don't end laning phase, yeah. great comp. <laughs> We're looking at two teams fighting almost for like the it. same spot. We have two show gaps on the top side as well. One is good, the actually is actually the original show gap. But it's time to send it away to the Casas desk. I I believe so, and I hope so. How are you doing, Initialize and Goldberg? So, Professor Heimerborg, I understand at that your you've, service. Uh, you've lost your role in the Analyst yeah, Council. Yeah, I'm currently at Sorn. This is Sorn of the NLC. Yeah, so fortunately for you, we have got a position over here on the casting desk. Um, oh. This will be your trial run here, and we've got an interesting matchup for you, and I'm going to need you to step up and take some of that history here into this game. Glad to have you on the Yes, desk, thank so. you so much. Thank you, thank you very much. So my specialty before was in, in the Danes. Uh, there's, there with you. there's no Danes here. There, aren't. There, is fin there are Finns, though. Got double Finns in that bot lane. Kevo versus Azator, and of course, a first for the NLC, and one of the first times we're seeing it, or rather, over the last couple of weeks. Anyway, Zeri locked in for the NLC. What are you thinking of it right here? Well, so far with the Zeri pick, I think there's definitely a lot of pressure because I think the desk touched on it pretty nicely. Uh, lockdown messes with uh, Zeri. And you have a Aphelius that got Gravitum available. You have the Twisted Fate in the mid lane with a stun card. You have the Thresh that, granted, will have a hard time landing hooks onto Kevo, but once one CZ has come down, you can pile it on top of her, which is why I like the fact that they've got a cleanse on Kevo and then doubled down on defensive summoner spells on the Yumi instead, so they skipped out on the Ignite uh, because they just need to survive this bot lane. You can clearly see on the Vanir composition that their point of attack is up towards the top, line, top lane. Now, granted, traditionally against TF, that it's difficult, but I think Aero is going to be spending most of his destinies and gates down towards the bottom side and not so much up towards the top side, unless the bot lane has just taken so much over with Asator and Abagnale that they, they, they just don't need the Twisted Fate. But I want to take it back to what you said about the uh, the Finnish AD carries there. Yeah. This is like two of the best Finnish AD carries that pretty much exist here, and Kevo and Asator have been our league for a while now. So the fact that we get to see two countrymen kind of battle it out against each other, uh, especially when it's the same role exactly. in the same league in the north, it's always exciting to see who can get the edge on the other. Yeah, just a little bit of additional spice into the matchup, which is always nice to keep our eyes on, especially when it is such an interesting new matchup as well. Zeri, of course, new to the league. Aphelios for Azator, it's not the Jinx, but you know, another one of those hyper carries alongside Abagnil, not on the Rakan as well, which I'll be interested to see how they can do. And kind of want to touch on it as well, as well. Like for Veneer, they are normally one of our better early game teams. Nariki, generally speaking, have been a little bit slower in the early game, generally speaking. Yeah. Um, and Veneer, I feel probably have taken an interesting option in saying, okay, well, if Nariki aren't going to be doing all that much in the early game, then maybe we get a free chance to take some of these slightly more scaling picks like the Gwen and stuff and maybe not be so hyper-aggressive early. Yeah, but you can already see it, right? This is Nariki's early game, at least with the mid lane and with the bot lane. They are stacking up a wave. They're most likely going to be crashing on the third wave. And because of this, they can try and deny them some CS. They can try and deny them some experience if they come close to them. So the Vanya bot lane has to play on the back foot. And the jungler right now from the Siege is actually pathing down towards the bottom. If he skipped the pan camp, went red and tried to set up for a dive here, that could be a dire situation. But timing's just not going to be there. What it in turn does allow for the Nariki bot lane is that they can 
can go for Cheetah Recall, you can send Avagnail out on the map, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. It seems like they're both opting in for that recall instead. Because look at the wave right now on the turret. Yeah. There's nothing that the enemy bot lane can do with Kevo. He's going to be forced to stay around, try and crash it, because the wave is just so big that it's going to be stacked up on the tower, and it's going to automatically slow push down towards Acetor. Free Recall gets an early Executioner's Calling. That's what that Longsword turns into once that anti heal straight away. Hold up, Decedra not spotted on a ward, and they might think he's on the bot side because the Gwen is currently taking the Scuttle. So a flash forward from Aero could seal the deal here, but no, they're gonna walk back to Noodle. And the back, Noodle has got that level of advantage to get the full clear off, but Desiderate with the uh, harrowed path will force Noodle back. Does get a hold of that one with the shove in the mid lane, decides does not want that. And of course, Abagnale did get that roam up as well. And that's the, that, that's one of the things bot lane priority allows you to do. I don't know if we can take a look at the bot lane right now as well, just to see that there you have it. Because they pushed in that wave, it's now stacking up. When a wave is stacking up like this, it allows the Thresh to roam around. And now when it's finally crashing, he's going to have perfect timing right now on this roam. And he's just going to be down here. So timing. pretty good early game from the side of Nubriki. It didn't give them anything in turn, but I, I like the way that they're showcasing these ways you play competitive league. Just to, as a little highlight. Absolutely. And, you know, for a team that we've said, maybe their laning phase hasn't been as um, consistent as we'd like uh, that's good news for Nuriki here, who are doing pretty well with the lane assignment they've been given. And of course, it's a predator Thresh who gets on that early recall, gets the boot straight away as the first back, and Azator already trying to, sorry, Azator, Abignell rather, trying to make the most of that early on with that roam and that comeback when that wave crashed the bot side. So yeah. well timed. Abagnale used a lot of his HP bar there to try and freeze yeah. the turret. Unsuccessful in that matter and taking ex uh, non-extended trades with a lane that has a Yumi, it's just, it's just not favorable. So a little bit risky there from the bot lane of Abagnale, but so that does give Kevo and Quickset some more room to play around with and they should have a jungler shadowing them as well. Nicely timed rupture there, but of course with the uh, adaptive shielding, Nile doesn't take very much damage there at all. Yeah. And uh, Kevo and Quixas will now take the opportunity to back themselves. Blind hook? Not what about it? <laughs> Something that could have been very nice. Now, Petoska... He could take a lot of damage. There's an Ignite. I think that's just a dead choke. I thought maybe not quite because he's got the pot. One final auto would have done it. Petoska smart. does get out and actually gets a summoner for that. Yeah, okay. So Nilid not in position where he could actually capitalize on that. I don't think he had enough mana for the W either there for the little tactical sweep. And because of that, the choke of Dustek get to live. Now, interesting buy from Petoska. He's actually opting in for a Dark Seal and an Amplifying Tome. So his way of responding to the aggression of Nilla is with his own point of attack, just stacking up. Right, with a T of the Guard is an Amplifying Tome, so he traded that Dark Seal. You could see the debate there. It's very yeah, Petoska. He with you double Amplifying <laughs> Tome, then the Dark Seal, and now he finally went with the, uh, the T of the Guard is instead. Now, Level 6 will be an important point, though. Aero is just about to hit it after these three minion waves, are, or minions, I do believe. And where he will find his first point of attack is going to be interesting, because if the bot lane gets too far overextended, you can try and look and collapse on them. Or you could try and predator forward with Abagnal here. Desiderate is off on that top side as well. They're coming in from three different directions, and Zahira is going to have to be very afraid. There's the predator pop, there's the lantern as well to bring people forward. Flash, Flay into the stun, into that flash. Hand Spectral, more easy kill. First blood to Desiderate. Yeah, brilliant chain of CC there. Flash forward with it, or just walk forward with the gold card, setting up the hook. There's nothing you can do in that exchange. And Zahira. Probably wish he had cleansed in that situation. Yeah. Let's have a look at it again because it's actually as easy as you love it. It's just the Predator getting popped. Flashes forward. You could have argued the hero should have just preemptively flashed as soon as he sees the Predator. Because I think every support main, at least I know when I'm walking, watching Thresh, walking forward like that, is that he has a tendency of wanting to flash forward now. Indeed he does. Flash play secures it pretty well. And for a mid jungle that has often been a little quiet for Nuriki, really good to see this kind of proactivity, this, this kind of pressure, especially when you are running the TF and want to get that out on the map. Great stuff from Nuriki in this early game, who have got themselves a 600 or so gold lead off how this has played out in these early minutes. Yeah, and that's an interesting talking point you're bringing up there as well, because as you said yourself, I feel like from Nuriki, the mid and jungle, at least the synergy they bring, has been a weaker side of Nuriki, but now when you have a Twisted Fate and when you have a Viego to play for, this is a composition, at least from the duo here, where you have to play around each other. You have to play for aggressive vision in the enemy jungle and skirmishing where you can move before the enemy mid laner. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can fix some of the issues that we've seen in the past. So far, you can see they're actually hovering around each other quite a bit. And that's a good thing to see, especially from a team like Nuriki that has continu continuously uh, kept growing since week one as a team.
Noodle, though, has been farming away on this Gwen. Got that level six before Desiderate. Takes a bit of a chunk there, but of course, as Gwen with the smite and all the healing she brings via her passive, isn't too worried. Secures her own Raptor camp. Uh, and Desiderate, hopefully looking for this level six, I believe off this Scuttle Crab. Yeah, she'd get it there. Another crucial thing we have missed as well is the first Drake did go over to Vanille. Of course, yes. Um, which is quite, I wouldn't say lucky, but it's quite convenient considering you barely have bot lane priority once Fresh is back in lane. Uh, so it's super nice you can buy yourself five extra minutes because the late game is what you're relying on here from the side of, uh, of Vanille. You completely outscale on side with Nilla on the Camille. The only thing that stops this is the Twisted Fate, but let's try and look at it a bit isolated for the sake of talking good about some of the solo lanes here. And then as well as the hero on the Victor, the ability to create great Round from champions that want to walk forward into you. Twisted Fate, uh, the, the Viego, not Viego, yeah, Viego as well, honestly. Uh, and the short range of Aphelios when he doesn't have Calibrum uh, is something that's extremely painful to play against when you're against the victor. Really, really is. And they do manage to pick up the Herald as well. That's kind of part of what they trade out for the Dragon. Feeling really happy about that. And when you've got things like the Aphelios with Crescendum, you turn that right with the TF turning up, you can absolutely look for every single play on a tower if you, pull it, if you play it properly. But so far, we've hit level 8 on the Twisted Fate, and we haven't actually seen a True. Destiny game. Um, so they haven't been too proactive with it, which is a bit interesting because in turn now, you could have just used it proactively and mm -hmm. still had it off cooldown. This is obviously still in theory, right? But it could have been back up to still commit plays now. So they're being very passive with this one, not really getting too much, and playing it slow is something that hugely benefits Vanir. Gonna get that stun card and gets to walk away. Hasn't burned any of his summoner spells. Nero does get to walk away with that one. Rapid lock into the gold card prevents Noodle from securing anything there. Okay, but let's try a look at the movement now because bot lane's getting priority from the side of Nuriki and it looks like they want to set up for a little scuttle skirmish. Yeah, you can see they're still on the aggression here. Just hunting around there and now that they've managed to force the mid laner back, now they can start roaming into this blue side jungle. Now they can think about using that destiny gate perhaps. And you can see those assist me pings definitely turning up towards that bot lane. Remember the Herald's in inventory, remember they've got that gate. Definitely looking for something here. Trying to look for the side of Noodle here, but they are able to steal away some of his camps now. They could have looked bot lane there, but they would have most likely just blown Sahira's TP and that would have been it. So they're opting in for plates in the mid lane instead, and as you said yourself, the Herald is up and available, so if you can cut them off guard, hold them down towards the bot side, yes, exactly. You can equalize the Herald here in the mid lane, and you can try and take care of the first turret by yourself. Who needs to get TF out of his lane when you can just go to his and get him ahead that way as the old shock laser did come out there from Kevo on that Zeri, looking to get something down. They get the Herald charge and the Chaos Storm comes out in trade. Tower doesn't quite fall, but that is inches away from it. I mean, it might as well have been falling, right? So right now, you're not too sad about it. You know, you just probably need two or three waves, and then you're able to set up the same place. Nilla now is quite low on the turret. Yes, indeed, that rupture coming up around the turret there to try and catch out the Camille stepping around it. No room to hook shot there. Another one does go wide. It is the rupture max, interestingly, from this uh, Cho'Gath looking to poke and interrupt the hook shots where they can. Oh, three for three there, misses completely. So Petoska most likely <laughs> just gonna push in this wave, try and set up a little cheetah recall for himself, try and force out a potential TP from Nilly. No, Nilly decides to stay around, raid for that cooldown, which can be dangerous because Aero does still have TP on the Twisted Fate. I'm actually not sure why they haven't put the Twisted Fate off here yet. Just not decided that. In fact, maybe just waiting around on this dragon that's spawning in 30 seconds will be a Hextech Drake. And still got that, of course, sorry, still got the health rod. They used it on the mid lane. Blind I am, apparently. But um, they're still looking maybe to continue using the pressure they've had in lane there, I guess. But it isn't a usual choice, I grant you. Um, this is still super good for you because you can apply pressure in the mid lane, open it up deeper just before Drake spawns here as well. You can push in topside now. So Nilla, you can see, yep, just TP's topside. And with this, they should just be forced to, to, to forfeit to Drake because now Petoska has a TP advantage. He's just going to be recalling. So their first Drake for Nuriki should just go over to them now. They should be able to start it. And yes, that's just the difficulties when you don't have mid lane priority, we don't have bot side priority, and when Nilla has just been pushed in and is forced to TP back up to try and get some resources for himself. And I do need to see, can't quite get it. Does get out of that gravity field there. That got a little Yo, bit dicey. You got two minutes to take it. No need to be as desperate for it. That, that was, I grant you, perhaps a touch over eager as Desiderate does turn up towards this bot lane to see whether there is um, something to be gained there. But it's just a look in as Hero being chased a little bit by Sahira. They should just wait for cannon waves to collapse yeah. here, pushing the bot side and then move up towards the mid lane. Noodle has found the Cedra. Might look for this one, does actually force out the ultimate. Heartbreaker is going to force the flash as well. Summoner and ultimate burn from the Viego. 
And that's the thing about a, a composition with a very limited amount of engage, especially with Yumi here combined with the Gwen. Now, it's great for skirmishing when you're fighting in the enemy jungle trying to lock them down, but when it's an open area where Thresh has the ability to dark passage uh, and make sure that you're just able to get out of there with no immediate CC to come through, it's very difficult to find pickups like this. It, it has to be around objectives or camps that you're fighting for it to, to really work here. And... Of course, this is Noodle, right? Noodle on a Gwen, not a Jinzao, not something high progressive. This is a guy for the for longest time in the NLC. He had 100% first blood rate. He was at 75% at the start of today and has been a little bit quiet, of course, is on a, a more farming option and there hasn't been that much action as yet. And this mid lane tower still standing, couldn't quite secure it even yet. Turret blading about to fall and they won't, by the looks of it, be able to secure that. And so here at this point with the last chapter and with enough levels, does have the wave clear to, to stymie the pushes that Nariki were tr uh, throwing there. Now have a look at this. Sahira is forced to recall, and you can see the bot lane moved off from the side of Nariki just to get some vision around the Gwen here. Once Twisted Fate gets out on the map, as he does now with a teleport, they can look for Destiny Gate and look for skirmish around this red buff. Oh, big Spectral more does force Noodle to back away. Of course, does have Quickset on top to keep himself alive as Nile does hop in, but gets knocked up for the uh, temerity of doing so. Mid lane to Zidorade, just trying to dance around those piling projectiles. This mid lane tower is so low, one final auto will do it. There's the lantern out, and uh, they don't quite get the uh, final turret plate, but they do secure first tower in base. Yes, he missed the 160, but still getting the first goal of getting the first tower is super nice. And especially when it's the mid lane turret, when you have a twisted fate, pushing in the mid lane and then roaming out towards your side lane should allow you to take care of the rest of them. And your other laners have been so good at actually taking down these outer turrets in terms of a little bit of HP. Now, Kevo looks for Acetor. Let's come over the wall with that spark surge throwing out that ultra shock laser but he's straight into severum crescendo you do not want to be close range with an Ophelius with those weapon choices how is kevo two levels down what has happened here this has been an isolated lane wait well i'm baffled about this i knew they had a good wave management from the side of niriki but the fact that kevo is only level eight on the seri hmm, I, without I, being i mean that is, is that just duo xp because abagnale was roaming a bit more see that was the that was the first thing i was thinking as well but then the fact that Asato is still up in cs is then really impressive as well so Asato definitely winning the finish battle right now in terms of these two ad carries Still, much of the game you have to play, so laning isn't everything. And of course, we still see how this one plays. As they get onto the giant void dinosaur on the top side for Tosca. Kind of gives it up there. Kill over to Nile, and that is a needed pickup for Veneer, who were falling pretty steadily behind as that game has been go as this game has been going. Yeah, great pickup from Venia, great punish from Nile and Noodle, because quite honestly, a little bit of an in recall there from the side of Tosca. Yeah, I mean, he's just recalling right Old. outside of the turret in Vision where Nilla is just able to dash on and misses the rupture as well. And I mean, all of his teammates are on reset timers right now. So just a little bit far forward there from the Niriki top laner. Yeah, he, he gets punished for being a little overextended. It's happened once or twice for Toshka where some of those dating decisions have been a little bit greedy, shall we say. And Desiderae has to blast Kona out. And that's actually four members running here on towards Desiderae. Does get the Heartbreaker over the wall and they can't quite secure the kill. But with these resources, they're still getting bot side turret from the side of Nuriki, so they're still getting stuff on the map. Now, Desidra needs to be a bit careful. Oh, flash for that spark surge. Oh, sorry, lightning crash, I apologize. There we go, get the right name of Zeri's ultimate there, and secures the kill in the hands of Noodle, I believe, actually. And with 40 odd seconds until this dragon, we'll see how this one played out again. Yeah, so they're trying to get deep vision before Drake respawns to have more for themselves. But you can see Vanya, they've spent a lot of resources around the bot side when they just had a reset on the top side instead. Now, I'm not too sure why they're still looking for this one, though, because Asator has just put in the top side, bot side which they need to respond to from the side of Vanya. When they're responding to the bot side wave, then you can start walking forward in Viva and start clearing out some of the vision. And not only that, you also blew the Destiny and Gate. So really just a little bit of a misplay there in the mid game from the side of Niriki, something we would usually say about Vanya, but they've turned it around. They've showed up a little bit in this mid game. A Noodle, he can look for more. He's going to continue hopping over the wall. He's got that Zeri behind, throwing down the Ultra Shot Lightning, and Kevo picks up that one. Chaos Storm comes down, and Veneer coming alive in this mid game. Once again, they keep finding some picks here in the mid game. Niriki, they're crumbling a little bit. They're struggling in terms of what they want to do, and it's just smart play from the side of Vanya. They're giving away other parts of the map in return of finding some kills and picking up this Drake. They still don't have any towers to Veneer, but it does keep the gold at that 2,000 mark. They'll secure a second rate for themselves. Now, Nile has run all the way to the top side. Didn't miss that hook shot, though. 
I think it might be a little over eager to continue chasing that one. Yes, the thing is, he doesn't really have vision. He knew his entire team was just bot side because they had to pick up the Drake. So, Nilla forced to back off, although he probably would have wanted to go in for a kill like that. And now, you can see this Citra, he knew something was up with Nilla's aggression. So, he's trying to come up here in Shadow, but he's quickly spotted out on a pink ward. And we're getting back to a little bit of a stalemate where we're really just waiting for the Destiny and Gate to be up and looking for a move from Niruki because quite honestly, in this game, the move is on Niruki. They're the yeah. one who should be trying to find these pickups. And they have, again, while they have got the early Goldie, but they have got the early Towers, it hasn't really been at, through Aero getting around the map. It's honestly people going to him and that Destiny Gate still not used and the Goldie not that extensive. Veneer played slow in the early game, but are now starting to get to the point where Gwen plus Yumi or Camille plus Yumi, Zeri plus Yumi, all pretty difficult options and a lot of chase down onto some pretty squishy members here from Nuriki. And you can see right now, currently the biggest gold lead is in the mid lane from the side of Aero over the side of Sahiro. So that 2k gold lead you see, that's only between the mid laners. But here comes a first Destiny Gate into the stun and top side, into that Spectrum more. Nearly taken very, very low. Heartbreaker comes through into that Hex deck ultimatum. That means absolutely nothing. They call the bluff, they get the kill. And yeah, that's the CC chain you're gonna have to work with. And since the itemization is so cheap for a Twisted Fate, he's already got the Everfrost, he's got the Rapid Fire Cannon. With that, you can always look for long range stun cards. They continue with the Herald. Yeah, that Herald was, of course, the second one picked up. They managed to shove it through onto this top lane tier two, but won't be able to get much more than a decent chunk onto it. They will clear out much of Veneer's red side jungle, though. Maybe think about continue to go. Of course, Noodle does have zoomies to keep them sped up and a ghost available, but don't feel quite comfortable to keep uh, the pressure up. Okay. They are just going to move around the map here instead. So moving all their resources up from one to the top side, down towards the bot side, where you can see Petoska actually stacked up a wave. And they don't have any vision here from the side of Vanya, so they're looking for picks. That was the Predator pop by Abagnale, but can't quite get on top of Noodle, who's quick enough with the skip and slash to back out of danger. Now pressure continues onto those bot lane tier two, and this is what Nariki have been playing through most of this game. Just pressure lanes, looking for structures. And one use of the Destiny Gate so far has brought one kill. In goes Nilly, big and stun mid hook shot. There is, of course, that Death Center. Noodle stepping forward, but throws down the Hallowed Mist to keep themselves immune. Chasing forward, doing so much damage. Doesn't get a kill onto Abagnell. And now Nariki have gone a little too far. Desideri over the wall. Azator trying to heal up with the Severum and uh, doesn't manage to survive for much longer. They managed to get another one into Petoshka. And Nariki just over shoving in that bot lane. And Veneer just chased them down. They're going to get a fourth here onto Aero, who flashes away. Going to try and get under this tower, but it's 3v1, and I don't think a gold card's gonna keep you alive here. No, because even if he starts recalling now, Yumi's just gonna shoot, be shooting prowling projectiles and great yeah. tanking from Quickset, just Beautiful. setting it up afterwards. And quite honestly, Niriki was just waiting for that to happen to them. Remember, they started that play topside, moved it into mid, then moved it down to bot. They've spent way too much time on the map, where they were just low on HP, low on mana, did not have all their ultimates, and because of this, Vanir was able to capitalize on him. So the turns of the tables, as I turn the tables on that phrase, um, <laughs> has actually turned around between these two teams, because it used to be Niriki who showed up in the mid game, and Vanir who kind of declined their mid game power spike, where now Vanir completely coming back into it with Niriki struggling to find their footing. A little bit of that reversal of fortunes and styles here. Looking good for Veneer in this mid game. And of course, it's the likes of Noodle leading the charge. Such a key player for Veneer in the early game. Now on a much more scaling pick, doing a lot of work. And then this was just an extended death, really. Not much that Aero could do. Nah, he was just waiting for that to happen, and with it, I think they were actually able to get that bot side turret and the mid lane turret, so now they actually have three turrets for themselves. Take a bit of damage there, it was looking for some, but here come the rest of Veneer oh, diving huge. in. It's gonna be huge damage, lightning crash from Zeri gets a lot, but now Azatar gonna gets so much damage to turn around. Jack Rooms go fly, gets a triple, make it a quadra. He can look for the Penta onto Noodle if he's really feeling it, and instead they say, screw that, we want the Baron. What the in. hell was that from Asator? He completely turned that fight around. God, just this guy is so good. He's so good. We literally just had Nariki in the mid game, falling apart here. It's a reverse of fortune. Asator just slaps down the Aphelios card and says, are you sure? And that Bruce fight should off. have been huge from the side of Vene. They had all of Nariki clumped up in the middle with Yumi ultimate, with the hero's AOE damage, and Asator just steps forward. The man hasn't even used flash or heal. It's <laughs> real. I mean, he has a mortal reminder second. That's not something like an LDR or high damage item. He just murders them all. 
brilliant. This allows them to get back. Well, they've been in the game for a while. This allows them to now stabilize the lead a little bit. And let's take a look at it again, because pay attention to Lilith. He actually finds a beautiful engage with Yumi. Kevo as well around, dashing in, and it looks like they're just going to get cleaned out here, house here. But it's the Moonlight Vigil with all these Chakrams, who's just allowing him to stack them up. Normally, Moonlight Vigil with Chakrams, not the best ultimate to use, because it doesn't only give you that much, unless you hit five people. people. That was one of those three weapon switches you love to see. He started with Sever and Crescendum, gets the onslaught for the rapid healing and the auto attack, stacks the Chakram, stacks even more with the ultimate. And then with what looks like a giant flying blender, just eviscerates for Nick. <laughs> beautiful, just absolutely beautiful. And that brings the game right back to even Ricky in a commanding position. Now, they couldn't secure Baron off the end of it, which, of course, they're going to be a little sad about, I'm sure. But they did get another Dragon. They do have four kills onto their Ophelios, who was their late-game win condition anyway. And Azatul, this finished bot lane, that kind of additional spice we added to this game, looking pretty good right now. But it's a good momentum swing as well, because as Nuriki, you just felt like you were losing grasp of the games. You kept making mistake after mistake after mistake. So finding a fight where your AD carry gets a quadra kill, it's a huge momentum and confidence boost to commit plays on the map now, which was something they struggled to do a little bit. All right, keep your eyes as well. That was an interesting pickup for Kevo as a second item. It's nothing like the Phantom Danta or a Black Cleaver that's often been common for Zeris. Gone straight towards Titanic Hydra, which is normally third, fourth for Zeris, as I understand it right now. Interesting choice there, see whether it does pay off. So the thing is, she was hotfixed a little bit to my understanding with the um, three item. I barely see yeah, it. Hurricane, oh, obviously. Hurricane, yeah, 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 exactly. Um, another fun fact is that I don't know if this is hotfixed as well, but with her Q, uh, the six shots she, she shoots out, she's able to instantly stack Black Cleaver. Cleaver but yes. enough about that, because engage in the mid lane. I can't get Lantern out because the Hextech ultimate is in the place. The Moonlight Vigil comes through, but it's not going to be enough. Aero has to go gold, but he's stuck in a gravity field, and there is no way you can lift up the weight of the world there. Stuck back down to ground, and it'll be Veneer moving back towards the Baron Pit with the mid jungle dead from Nariki. And you need to be careful. It's still good to gun from Azatar. He does have flash and heals. There's outplay potential, but it's a three versus five from Niriki. They can flash feast on Potoska as well. They've still got that secure available. Going to do a lot of damage. Gwen's immune, but it's just dead. Nearly falls down. The Gwen needs to back out. Azatar got the heal. Doesn't quite manage to get it. They're going to keep running down as a double for Zeri. Burst fire's coming out, and they're just going to chakram him down. Not enough in the tank for Azatol, who does fall down there. Yeah, you can see he just tried to Gale fall in, in their face, hoping that he could find the outplay, but he's just not able to it. And in the end, they pick up the Ace from the side of Vanir, and they should be able to pick up the Baron. Once again, Disastro's early game has turned into a favorable mid game that Vanir is now trying to push forward into the late game. Decitra has spawned, has flash, has ultimate, has smite. And here comes Aero as Gale gets the gold card. It's down to 2,000. Desidere can think about the stun. Has got ultimate and flash. They get the exhaust. He's flashing in. Going to try and get enough damage to secure it. So tanky, you might be able to do it. It's going to be the actual 50-50. Does go down to Noodle. And they get the kills as well. But Nariki got in there and they made it a fight. In, in the end, they just end up giving more kills. That's seven kills from one fight they get here. And let's take a look at it again. Nilly, he's managed to sneak into this bot side. Bush in the mid lane. Picks up the Seedra immediately. No way for him to get out of the Hectag ultimatum. And here's the thing. When Vanya starts running you down when you have a Gwen that's immune, Astro can never step up. And this is the uh, pressure that Sahira applies as well on the Victor, the race, the Q. Astro needs to be so wary of his position, and it's such a difficult situation they've ended up in. Three versus five, it's a miracle they're looking for, but miracle rarely happens. The lightning crash came out of Kevo, and suddenly he's starting firing on all cylinders. Noodles got Gwen on, and you just can't run fast enough to keep away from them all. They said on the desk it was going to be difficult to dive into this squad. Well, it turns out we got this much healing, this much damage. There's no way to run away from them either. They get Baron. They put themselves up in a commanding position in the game. It's now 6,000 up, and what has been a pretty back and forth mid game with both teams kind of handing over leads is now certainly firmly in the hands of Veneer now. Before this Drake, let's try and talk the two AD carries as well now because Kevo has actually gotten back into the game. He's now 6 and 1 in 8 on the Seri. Um, on the Seri. And he's got a shot down. He's equal in levels. Remember, he was two levels down from laning phase and almost equal in farm. So he's totally back into this game. So not only is Gwen a threat in, st in these team fights, Kevo, once he finally gets his ult off and his E, so his bullets penetrates targets and move further, that when, that's when he starts to become incredibly scary now that he's three items. Okay, they're going to continue trying to run forward there with the Shirelias, but can't quite get 
on to Noodle, who does have to pop that Hallowed Mist, and now has to be a little afraid, of course, because the Predators pop from Abagnale, looking to use as much damage as they can. That'll be the Destiny Gate forwards, but Aero takes so much damage. It's a flash away from Sahira as the Gold Card comes through, but now the Teleport into the back line. Unstoppable goes nearly, but he's very deep, but all the while, Noodle destroys Cho'Gath. He said it'll be one back, but can they get out? No, they cannot. Desiderate, not quick enough on the hook shot, and Sahira on the killing spree. Now in 4v5, oh Zeri so fast, so dangerous. The Ultra Shock laser comes down, Aero goes golden, but it's not going to be for long enough. The stace is not there, and it is a four for one. They'll start running down the mid lane. They've got Baron on them, and I think Vidir have done it. 20 second death timers, Baron buff, cannon wave coming forward, only Asa to left to defend the base for Nuraki. I think this should just be the end, unless a miracle can happen for the man in the bot lane. He's going to try his best, but he's not got the best weapons, and Noodle just cuts his legs right from under him. And that's the ace, that's the game. Veneer moved to five and four. It was a close affair until it wasn't. You gotta compliment Mania for their mid game because they really find their stride to come back into this one. But Niraki, once again, they're struggling with this twisted fate. You can clearly see that this is a champion that you don't get scrim on, scrim on often as well because they were not really looking for these destiny gates. They're trying to play around the mid lane, but they never broadened that pressure from the mid lane to the outer turrets. And when they finally did, it was from an overextension down in the bot lane that really put Mania back in the game. It did. And Credit to Veneer for showing us something different for proving they can play mid game well, like some slip ups, but actually from an early game that they were put behind a bit, they come back, they get the souls, they get the Baron and what do you Did want you know it? that triangle where it's only sleep, uh, game, friends, like yes. social life yeah, friends? Yeah. That's the, kind of the same for Vanir. You either get the early game and get ahead <laughs> in the mid game or you get the early game and fall behind in the mid game. Well, you heard it from Goldborg. We'll see whether the analyst desk, of course, agrees, but we've got to cut to a break. Be right back after this one. One game to go. See you soon.